we go on to our next speaker. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pradeep Jain, he'll be speaking on lap median pancreatic to me. So the Department of Gastrointestinal and uh, HP Surgery from Fortis Hospital, Delhi. Uh, good morning, everybody. So I'll be showing a small video on the central pancreatomy. It's quite a controversial uh, surgery, actually. It has been done for the last two decades, but not many cases has been done. We know that the mortality of uh, the bigger surgeries, like Whipple's and distal pancreatomy, that has decreased because the availability of good technique, good interventional radiologist, and uh, ICU care. But the morbidity is still large. Because this kind of morbidity cannot assume in uh, smaller lesions, benign lesions. So we have to take a trade-off in this case. Okay, basically, we want to have a more of a higher uh, early morbidity or a longer uh, endocrine functions or lesser early morbidity with comparatively poor endocrine functions and bigger uh, resections. So we have to choose these surgeries, these median pancreatomy in younger patients who have to live longer and who have more life to live, so they don't have an endocrine insufficiency. So this is a video of a 51 years old male who has diabetic, small uh, uh, lesion in the neck of the pancreas. And endoscopic guided uh, FNC was done in this case and uh, because of that it had a hematoma and uh, we had to wait for three weeks to do the surgery. And this surgery we do it in uh, supine position with leg split and in, like in all cases of uh, upper abdominal surgery we put five ports. And first of all we open the lesser sac and start dissecting the anterior part of the pancreas. And you can see here there is a, a lot of uh, edema in this case because of pancreatitis as well as hematoma on the head of the pancreas. So the dissection was difficult in this case. The first thing we ligate here is the right gastroploic uh, vessels and then we incise the lower border of the pancreas. It was a bit difficult to see in this area because of the acute pancreatitis, but slow and steadily we incise the lower part of the uh, border of the pancreas and uh, make a tunnel anterior to the superior mesenteric vein. And because of a uh, lot of pancreatitis here, the oozing was more, but gradually we made a good tunnel anterior to the superior mesenteric vein here. And these uh, smaller vessels which draining into the superior mesenteric vein can be ligated with the uh, ligature or we can put a clip also. And after making a tunnel, we just hook the neck of the pancreas. And you can see the lot of uh, hematoma here. So the dissection of hepatic artery is a bit difficult here, but this is the first part we dissect over the upper border of uh, pancreas. And this is the left gastric vein, which is draining into the portal vein. And normally we do not require to ligate any vessels in this area, but because of a uh, lot of uh, vascular anomaly here and adhesions, we had to uh, ligate the transverse pancreatic artery here. Normally it is not required. So there are other unnamed vessels in this area which are supposed to be ligated and cut. And the pancreas is, neck and the body of the pancreas is totally freed from all other structures. And after mobilizing the neck and body of the pancreas, we just transact it with the echelon 60 blue cartridges. In normal pancreas, we divide it with the white cartridge, but because here the pancreas was a bit thicker, so we had to divide it by uh, blue cartridge. And now this body is gradually being mobilized. Once we have adequately mobilized the pancreas, then we decide about the line of transaction here. So there's adequate mobilization of the pancreas. <coughs> now 
Now this is the line of transaction on the body side. This we can divide with the either the clean scissor or with the harmonic scalpel because there were a lot of inflammation in this area. So we have to divide this pancreas gradually with the harmonic scalpel. And we just cut it bit by bit and see whether we can identify the ducts. Sometimes it is not possible to identify the ducts separately. So we have to just keep cutting with the harmonic scalpel. <coughs> Now we can identify the duct hair and we put the specimen into the small bag and take it out just to see whether we have adequate margins uh, of the, from the lesion. And normally in a normal pancreas we do not oversue the stepper line on the proximal part but because this patient was a bit different, it was uh, acute, following acute pancreatitis and hematoma, so to be more sure we have to just oversue this with proline 3-0. And this is the remnant pancreas in which first we cannulate the duct just to see the adequacy. And most of the times I do pancreaticogegenostomy, but this is the case where it, it is better to do a pancreaticogastrostomy because the chances of leak more in uh, pancreaticogegenostomy. So this is the first layer, seromuscular stomach with the capsule of the pancreas just one centimeter away from the cut edge of the pancreas. Four or five sutures are adequate because we, I do not like to put too many sutures too close. This is the first layer. Now we open the stomach, do a nice gastrotomy. This can be done either with the harmonic or with the monopolar hook. This is the second layer. This is done with the 3O PDS. Again, uh, nicely spread out uh, sutures. Five, six sutures are enough. Here you can put a continuous suture also, but uh, I'll my, this is my pers personal preference to put uh, interrupted sutures. Now this internal stent has pushed into the stomach. The third layer, again interrupted, 3O PDS. Because this duct was centrally placed, we had no concern about taking a bigger bites from the posterior capsule. If the duct is, as the previous speaker told that, uh, if the duct is posterior located, you have to be very careful not to take the duct in the sutures. Now this is the fourth layer. Again, 3O proline. After completing the nasmosis, maintain the hemostasis, give a small lavage, and put a Jackson Pratt drain. And I always place uh, feeding jejunostomy in these cases. Because we have done a pancreatic gastrostomy, there's a leak, we'll have a problem with the internal nutrition, so we always place a feeding tube in this. Thank you so much. Uh. Thank you, Dr. Jain. Excellent presentation, very uh, skilled, great laparoscopic skills. I just have one question for you. Uh, how do you decide on the margins intraoperatively, especially if the tumor is a little on the smaller side? So this how tumor, you know? as, actually you should have always have an intraoperative ultrasound with you, so, but we do not have this. So we knew that this is a very small three centimeter lesion just present at the neck of the, just on the left side of the superior mesenteric vein. So we already measured that area. This is either, either side of the neck of the pancreas, we were three or four centimeter away from that side. So we were reasonably sure. 
that we have taken adequate margin and we took out the specimen before started making an anastomosis and this uh, looked about the margins. So would you, would you consider this to be a safe or adequate procedure if it was a, any suspicion of a malignancy? No, this procedure is always done in uh, low malignant potential uh, lesions or, or a benign, benign lesions. Lesion. Never done in uh, malignant uh, cases. Okay. Never. Any other questions from the audience? If there are no further questions, thank you, Dr. Jain. Thank you so much for your kindness.